Hello everybody, Lurch for Life here bringing us a brand new video. And today we are going to talk about the first of the three archetypes from Ancient Guardians that, well, have been revealed. Uh, I know I'm a bit late on this. <laughs> I'm going to be trying to try and get back into the swing of things with uh, recording and everything, but I actually need to like set some time to, you know, make stuff. So hopefully next week we will see an actual, you know, uh, good old... Archetype analysis. I could not remember my own freaking series name. God dang it. <laughs> I've been out of this too long. Um, and I also want to get around to doling and stuff. And heck, I might live stream on Monday because I got the day off like I do today. Um, maybe even Sunday. I don't know. I, I got to decide. And hey, also, on that note, if you guys want me to do... Actually, no. I won't. Uh... I'll mention it later. I don't like to try and take up so much time at the beginning. So today we're going to talk about the Ursartic. At least that's what they're going to be called in TCG, Ursartic. Uh, this article came out before this, and so therefore we know them as Berkti over here. But I'm going to try and call them the Ursartic because that's what they're called in the TCG, but I digress. So let's talk about the Gundam Bears, <laughs> as people are calling them. Uh, we got... Earth's Arctic McPola, level 7 water beast effect monster, attack 700, defense 2k. You can only use each of its effects once per turn. That's a hard once per turn on both. A really cool looking polar bear thing. It looks like they're above the earth too, I can't tell. Uh, but anyways, 700 attack, 2k defense. Now, something that's really cool with this archetype right away is that all of the non-tuners have 700 attack and, 700, and about 17 or 1400 defense. They have basically super low attack and defense. And then the tuners are the beefy boys with freaking 25, 24, and 2,800 attack power. And then, look at that. We got a level 1, we got a level one synchro monster. I love it, okay? This is just, I love it. This, this whole idea that Konami has here. I love how they're toying around with the game mechanics a bit more. Hopefully this means we can maybe one day get dark synchros, but I kind of I, I kind of doubt it. And I'm hoping... That the other two archetypes in this set mess around with uh, their respective uh, summoning mechanics, whichever ones they focus on. Uh, I know that this one, the one with the waifu, is a pendulum archetype. I'm hoping maybe we finally get a pendulum archetype that has different scales depending on what, uh, like depending on which scale they're in. It's so, like you know, the left side they're like scale three, the right side they're like scale ten, and then I'm really hoping the reptile deck is a fusion deck. <laughs> It'd be so cool. Uh, that Maybe even like, now yeah, we got Rituals last time, so it would make sense to have a fusion deck. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so let's talk about McPola here. Every single Barity has this effect here where you can, as a quick effect during the main phase, tribute one other level 7 or higher monster in your hand. Spell summon this card from your hand. Also, you cannot spell summon monsters for the rest of this turn except for monsters that have a level. Very obnoxious uh, restriction here, but very necessary. You don't want your, you don't want to be able to just spam out link material and fodder and stuff so very very important there i do wish that it'd let you go into xc's at least but uh, i guess i'll, I'll rely on this <laughs> if this card is special summon, you can add an uh ursotic uh ursartic yeah ursartic from your deck to your hand it's a separate copy of beric t uh mcpola and there i go mixing with the names <laughs> but anyways yeah so he's a he's a searcher of the deck replenishes your you lost materials and gets you another dude pretty cool then we got uh, Ursartic McTannis, which is the black bear. Uh, 700 attack, 17 our defense. Standard quick effect to spell summon itself. And then if he was spell summon, you can target Ursartic in your graveyard, add it to your hand. You can't add himself, which is a bit annoying, but oh well. Then we got Ursartic McBillis, uh, which I think is the brown bear. Level 7, uh, water beast effect, 700 attack, 1400 defense. By the way, the fact that these are all beast monsters is going to be very, very important. Uh, standard spell summon effect, and if you have spell summon, you can summon another dude from your hand, except for a copy of himself. Very, very cool. Now, right off the bat, there's a few cards I want to talk about that will be very, very important for this archetype, because a lot of people are talking about it, that this deck's going to have grind game issues. And the first thing is salvage. And that is like the big one. Add two water monsters with 15 or less attack in your graveyard to your hand, which is very, very, very important. Uh, and then the other one is, I think it's called Iyer's Rock or something like that. Iyer, no. Rock Sunrise. Yeah, Iyer's Rock. I misspelled Iyer's, that's why. 
You target a beast in your graveyard, spell summon it, and if you do, I'll face up monsters, yada yada yada. Um, so basically it's this monster born for beast type monsters. So these two are going to be super important because you need to be able to recur that advantage super heavily. And then, I wonder if this would work. Tongue Twister, I remember this guy. Ah, uh, it has to be tributed. Darn it! <laughs> I, I thought you could tribute it in your hand to it. That, that's a sad thing. But yeah, so these two are going to be very, very important for the archetype. Uh, so yeah, very, very, very cool. And then we got the tuners. The tuners have that high attack, and honestly, you could probably kill your opponent a lot with just the tuners by themselves. <laughs> like, jeez. Level 8 Water Beast Warrior Tuner. Effect Monster, 2500 attack, 700 defense. You don't use each effect of this card's name once per turn, and only once a turn, yada, yada, yada. During the main phase, is a quick effect, has standard effect. If this card is spell summoned by you control another Ursardic, you can target a spell trap card your opponent controls and destroy it. This is really, really important because, uh, well, popping, and also quick effect popping. And on top of that, this is something else that we gotta note, that all the tuners require you to control another Ursardic, while the non-tuners don't care. So that is something also to be very, like, just kind of note about, <laughs> which is a bit annoying. Because uh, you got to keep that in mind whenever you're playing this deck. I really wish you could tribute monsters on the field, too, but it has to be in your hand, which is a bit annoying. Next up, we got Bear T, or, or Sardic Megatarnus, which <laughs> just so cool looking. I love the artwork on these things. Uh, 2400 attack, 700 defense, Beast Warrior Tuner, level 8, standard effect. And then if this card is spell summoned away, control another Ursardic. You can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, change it to face-down defense position. This is really, really cool because it's more disruption. And that's what I really like, is that this deck is going to have a lot of disruption and a lot of just kind of staying power. In that you really want to summon the non-tuners during your turn, but then you want to summon the tuners during your opponent's turn because, oh, hey, pop a spell trap card. Oh, your opponent activates a field spell. Okay, I'm going to pop it. Oh, your opponent tries to summon a dude to make a link monster? Oh, I'm going to book it. Uh, same, you know, so on and so forth. And then we got the bear, the, the brown bear, Megabillus. Level 8, water beast, tuner effect monster. Sorry, beast warrior, not beast. <laughs> I just noticed the non-tuners are beast, and then the, be the tuners are beast warrior. I did not notice that before. That is cool. So, 2800 attack, 700 defense, standard effect. If it's special, no, you can turn another Ursardic. You can target one card in your opponent's graveyard. Banish it. Pretty nice having an archetypal DD Crow there. I like it. Uh, just Don me. These guys are all, you know, oh wait, yeah, yeah, they are technically hand traps, but like, I was just thinking about it, like, oh, you can totally use it. No, you have to have an um, Sardic on the field. That's probably why they did that, because <laughs> otherwise these things could be a hand trap for archetypes. Then we got the first ever level one synchro in the game, Ursardic Polari. Look at this cute little thing. 700 attack, 1000 defense. It's a level 1 water beast synchro effect monster. Cannot be synchro summoned. Must be spell summoned from your archetype by sending one tuner and one non tuner you control whose levels differ by 1 to the graveyard. And this is how this archetype synchro summons. Every single synchro has this effect, roughly. <laughs> uh, kind of. You first have to summon Polari, and then the big guys can be can be summoned by sending Polari and one of the main deck guys to the graveyard, um, which is a bit annoying. And it actually has to be the tuners, uh, not the non-tuners. That's something else that has to be kind of noted. Uh, but however, it is a bit annoying, but it makes sense in how this archetype is working. I just can't wait to play it. <laughs> so if this guy is supposed to summon, you can activate one Ursardic Big Dipper directly from your deck. You can tribute one level 7 or higher monster, add to your hand, or spell summon one Ursardic monster from your graveyard. This is really, really, really interesting and very important for the archetype because you need to be able to get out your dudes and, oh, hey, you, if you have a uh, non-tuner out, you need to switch it for a tuner. And that's the important thing. You need the tuner because this thing's a non-tuner. So, very good card overall for what the deck wants to do, and it also lets you play less uh, Big Dipper than you probably need to because that's going to be very helpful. Big Dipper is a big card for this archetype, and we'll get to it when we get to the Spells and Traps. Next up, we get the Boss Monster, or Sardic Septon Trion, and I think they spelt it different here. Yeah, Se Septon Trion. Okay, so it's the same thing. It just is all one word instead of two words. Okay. And Big Boy. <laughs> uh, it's a level 7 Water Beast Warrior Synchro Effect Monster. 3k attack, 700 defense. Cannot be Synchro Summoned. Must be Special Summoned from your stick by sending one level 8 or higher tuner 
and one non-tuner synchro monster you control whose levels differ by seven to the graveyard. Now, technically speaking, these things are generic, uh, which is interesting. I can't help but wonder if anybody's going to actually play these in any other archetypes, but I kind of doubt it, so we'll have to wait and see. Especially since the tuner has to be a level 8 or higher. There's not a lot of level 8 or higher tuners in the game. Uh, just out of curiosity, I'm going to check because now I'm curious. <laughs> so let's see here. Monster. Uh, tuner. So. A Dragon Core Hexer. Right off the bat, that's just one. And <laughs> it's a normal monster. Uh, which it's, It is a Dark Dragon level 8. You could play it in certain decks. And then... Oh my god, if Flower Cardians didn't have the restriction, they could play these. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot all about Flower Cardians. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh god, if you're not locked into Flower Cardians, which is a way to get Flower Cardians on the field without locking yourself into it, you can totally play to your Sardix in the deck. <laughs> that is great. I didn't even think about that. I love it. Oh, I love it. Uh, Bird of Paradise Lost. Uh, I forgot this card was even a thing. <laughs> oh, God. And then, yeah, that's it for the main deck ones. Um, let's see here. I think there's a few synchros. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, you can always do some level modulate. Wait, what's the minute? Oh, <laughs> Genix. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Okay, so yeah, you can do live stream dragon. <laughs> oh my god, Math Max! <laughs> I forgot. Oh wait, no, he becomes a tuner, right? Uh, no, he is a tuner. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. I so selected tuners and birth specific. Uh, okay, so we do have a few. <laughs> he is generic. That's a bit overkill. That's a bit overkill, but it is doable. <laughs> it is doable. Uh. Wait, I thought there was a fusion tuner. Okay, yeah, there he is. Okay, so anyways, why would you even want to consider summoning this? Well, the effects of all face-up special monsters from the extract that have no level are negated. <laughs> so, Lynx and Xyz are just screwed <laughs> against these things. <laughs> this is so mean. <laughs> I love it. I love it. As somebody who really does not like Lynx in general... <laughs> I love this deck already. Uh, ow, my head. I'm laughing too hard. Uh, if your opponent specimens a monster, you can add an Ursartic from your deck to your hand. Oh my god. It's like, hey, give me free stuff. You can only use it once a turn, but I get free stuff. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. We only got two of the big synchros revealed. I'm sure we're going to get a third big synchro to match so like the three big guys. Next up, we got Ursartic Grand Chariot. I love the design on these things. They're so cool. 27 attack, level 7, Water Beast Warrior Synchro effect, yada, yada, yada. Um, standard effect, uh, same thing as him. Like, you know, you send a dude who's level 8 or higher to a lawn tuner whose different levels differ by 7. If this card is special summon, you can target up to two cards on the field and destroy them. I like it. Give us a way to Synchro Summon during your opponent's turn with this. <laughs> I don't see it happening, but hey, I like it. Um, once per turn, when a card or effect is activated that targets an Ursartic you control, or Ursartix you control, quick effect, you contribute one monster from your hand or field, negate the activation. Really good card right off the bat. I like it. Negation's very good. I'm sorry if you hear dogs barking. That is my neighbor's dog, and I can't really stop him. He likes to bark, and it's shut. Shut up, Rocky! <laughs> anyway, so, these are really good cards. The issue I have with these guys, and it's totally due to the simple fact of how the summoning mechanic works for these guys is because they cannot be synchro summoned they must be spell summoned from your extra deck by sending one tuner and one yada yada this is being they're not being properly summoned um unless i am unless i'm totally misunderstanding this from what i have read when these guys hit the graveyard they are dead in the water they are in the graveyard for good you cannot special summon them from your graveyard. Um, well, yes, this is your their summoning mechanic right there. Uh, it seems to be a bit of a gray area. We'll have to wait for official rulings, but from what I've been reading, the general consensus is once these guys hit the graveyard, you cannot special summon them. Which means Pot of Avarice or some kind of recursion for them 
is probably going to be very, very important. How Pot of Avarice is probably going to be amazingly important for this deck in general because of just how much you're going to be tributing and you're going to fill that graveyard very quickly. This deck could probably play Moonlong Glacia too, which is pretty interesting. Next up, we got the Field Spell, uh, Ursardic Big Dipper. Do keep in mind, Polari can search the street from the deck. Field Spell, once per turn, if you attribute a monster to activate a Berti or Ursardic Monster's effect, you can banish one level 7 or higher Ursardic from your graveyard instead. You know, just helping you keep your resources from going completely away. Each time a monster is spell summoned, place one counter on this card. Once per turn, if a monster is spell summoned, you can remove all counters from this card, minimum of seven. Then target one monster your opponent controls. Take control of it. You can only activate this effect while there's a Ursardic Synchro monster on the field. So you can rack up counters pretty easily with this deck, especially if your opponent starts spamming off and everything. And... It's pretty good. I've, you're mainly, mainly using it for its first effect, but the counter building is pretty interesting and can help you kind of just steal stuff, and it's mean. <laughs> it kind of comes out of nowhere, though, because this archetype doesn't do anything with stealing stuff. I would much rather it, like, I don't know, remove counters to search, remove counters to add to hand, remove counters to attack boost, anything. Like, really, it doesn't make any sense to steal stuff. But hey, it, it is something your opponent's got to keep in mind when playing against an Ursardic deck. Next up, we got a Quick Play Spell card, Ursardic Slider. Uh, quick Play Spell, you can activate one card to discard in per turn. Quick uh, Activate it, target one of your Ursardic monsters is banished during the graveyard. You cannot spell summon monsters for us this turn after this card resolves, except monsters that have a level. Also spell summon at target, but it cannot attack and destroy it during the end phase. Pretty good card all around, it's a monster born for the archetype, and hey, you get out your... Uh, it's a quick play, so you can do it during your opponent's turn and get your searching and stuff during your opponent's turn, and then you don't really care if they get destroyed as much. Next up, we got the a continuous trap card, Ursardic Quint Charge. Uh, once per turn, you can pay 700 life points, activate one of these effects. Add an Ursardic from your graveyard to your hand. Very important right there, because again, this deck's going to eat through its resources so quick. Or you can tribute two Ursardic monsters, and if you do, spell summon one Ursardic monster from your extract whose levels equal the difference between. Oh! Oh, okay, cool. So this this lets you does base this lets you basically synchro summon during your opponent's turn. So yeah, there is a way to summon Grand Chariot during your opponent's turn because he doesn't care how he special summon. Um, so there is that. That's pretty cool. So you do have a way to quick effect pop during your opponent's turn with this deck. I like that. Second effect: when your Ursardic synchro monster is destroyed by battle with an opponent's mo attacking monster, you can have your opponent shuffle all cards from your hand field and graveyard into the deck until they have a total of seven. <laughs> That is mean. That is mean. Oh, hey, opponent's attacking. Okay, flip this over. Uh, on attack deck relation. <laughs> Kills my dude. Okay, now you gotta shuffle everything. <laughs> that is so mean. I love it. This is such such a mean card. Beautiful artwork, too, as well. And then they did announce that there's an Iris Rock Sunrise reprint in here, which is very important because this card has not had a reprint in forever. Um... Again, I really like this archetype so far. I really do. I feel like it's got some issues that I'm sure they're going to work out in future support. Uh, but however, it seems like it's going to be a fun archetype. I wish that they had a bit more options and variety in what they could do. But they're pretty much going to be stuck making their own dudes. Unless like you um, get out your monsters and then like leave them out in the field. And then you can maybe make some Link or Xyz plays uh, during your next turn. But there's no guarantee they'll survive. So you got to keep that in mind. Moving on, there's some more cards revealed for Lightning Overdrive, uh, or Overload, I don't remember what it's called. The big one is Book of Lunar Eclipse. This was teased a while back that there's an upgraded Book of Moon, and this thing is pretty good. Uh, discard one card, it's a quick play. Uh, then target two face-up monsters on the field, change them to face-down defense position. A really good card right off the bat there. I don't know if it's going to see play. Regular Book of Moon doesn't see much, if any, play anymore. Uh, so Book of Lunar Eclipse, who knows? Maybe to this card and then to, well, book two. I mean, it is basically, it, it reminds me a lot of Twin Twister. <laughs> it's basically Twin Twister, but Book of Moon version. Uh, pretty interesting card all around. It's a bit more impactful than Book of Moon, so that might make it see a bit more play because you can Book of Moon two things instead of one. Going to be interesting, and it's going to be very weird hearing get booked again for the first time in like five years. <laughs> Uh, then there's Yamo, Yamoi Mori, uh, Rado Reptile, this little dude. This thing looks pretty good, okay. Reptile effect, level 2, zero, 0, You can only use this card's name's effect once per turn. You can manage this card from your graveyard and target a reptile you control and one face-up monster your opponent controls. Activate one of these effects. 
Change the target monsters to face down defense position. Or destroy your target, and if you do, change your opponent's monster's attack to zero until the end of this turn. Now you might be thinking, low tier, what is this card good in? This thing is garbage. Well, have you ever heard of an archetype called Reptilian? This deck, let's see here, is it going to pop up for me? Dang it, okay. There it is, Reptilian. This deck here uh, is all about, it's a reptile deck for one thing, so hey, reptiles. And then it's all about having your opponent's monsters be at zero attack points and doing stuff. Now, is it going to make Reptilians good? No, not even their newest support, Lamia, or their Link monster did that for them. But it's going to be good support for the deck, and hopefully maybe Konami will give this archetype some more support one of these days. I really hope so, at least. It really needs it. It's one of those decks that is like has a pretty interesting play style, but then Konami just doesn't care. So... This card right here, very, very good, especially since, uh, at least for the deck, because you can target your Reptilian Gardena, destroy it, reduce your opponent's monster to zero, and then, hey, Gardena, well, get to search out a Reptilian monster. There's not much you can do after that, but you can do it. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, Chikujin Carbon, uh, Earth Fairy Effect, level 4, 12, 12. 12. Uh, you can only use each of this card's names once per turn. You contribute this card, uh, this normal summon card, add an Earth Fairy Monster from your deck to your hand, except a copy of itself. If a face up Earth Fairy Monster you control is sent to the graveyard, or this card is in your graveyard, you can place it on top of your deck. Uh, for Earth Fairies, there's really not much, like, at all. <laughs> fairy. Er, no, that's water. Water. Earth. Now you can search out two Time Lords. That's pretty cool. You can search out Mystical Beasts of Secret uh, Circuit. You can search out Cal Cataclysmic Crusted Cal Cal Cafita. Uh, <laughs> you can search out Skyscourt's Infocell, which is actually kind of important. <laughs> this card <laughs> that actually is kind of good. Searching out Infocell. You can search out like all the Medoshes and all the Fluffles. Uh, there's a few other stuff, but like it's it's not good. It's not good. There's not much. <laughs> uh, next up we got Hendo Kiku Cluckart. It's an odd pun on climate change. <laughs> uh, machine Pendulum Effect, level 4, scale 4, 600 attack, 1200 defense. Pendulum Effect, while you control no monsters or all card or all monsters you control are Pendulum Monsters, apply this effect based on the Pendulum scale it's in. Left, reduce the scales. Uh, discard scale by 3. Right, increase the scales by 4. I like this. This is something I kind of wish Konami would have tinkered around with a bit more, but hey, it's cool that they're doing it now. Once per turn during your opponent's standby phase, you can spell summon this card from your pendulum zone. Uh, and in monster effect, if this card is spell summoned to a zone that is not the center main monster zone, destroy this card. And it cannot be destroyed by battle. Once per turn during your opponent's end phase, you can target one card in your pendulum zone, destroy it, and if you do, place this card in your pendulum zone. So, pretty interesting cards all around. But mainly the Ursardic monsters are really, really cool. And I can't wait to see what's going to come more from Ancient Guardians. So, guys, let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And see you all later. Peace out. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do consider rating, commenting, and subscribing. Sharing the video helps as well. If you especially really like it, please do consider being a channel member. Every little bit helps out. And hey, also why not check me out on my other social media pages. Thank you and have a great day.